just ready to go on another patrol up along the Delaware, stop those Indians from coming in from Pennsylvania, and they've been doing that quite a bit lately. In fact, they got the Sword Out family, you know, recently, and killed Mrs. Sword Out and some of the children, and captured Mr. Sword Out and eventually killed him, and captured two of the children and took off. Uh, hopefully we'll recover them soon. I understand there was a raid at the Hunt family too. That would happen at the same same night. Eventually they stopped at the Hunt place first and Colonel Hunt wasn't there. And then they came over to the sword outs after that. I see. Tell me your side of the story here. Well, I understand that the raids have taken place and the Frontier Guard has been called out to defend the frontier and the settlements along the Delaware, along Old Mine Road, to... Uh, to protect the settlers from Indian attack, further Indian attack. I understand Captain Gardner is, is forming a patrol to go out to the Wyoming Valley and uh, take no prisoners. Yeah, you got it. Well, hopefully when we go out to the Wyoming Valley, we'll be able to catch them in some of their villages and settlements, and yeah. maybe we can burn some of the houses and crops, etc., and maybe even recapture some of the construction. We, uh, the last fort was Fort Gardner. It's up in, uh, up in northern Jersey, up in northern Sussex County. Still in the construction, I understand it's uh, 100 by 100 stockaded walls with swivel guns mounted. Yeah, fortunately, at Fort Gardner will have, I believe, we should have three swivel guns, you know, small bastions on each corner, for a little protection for the area. And the swivel guns should be able to cover you know, a good 300 yard swath as far as spray and shot. Yeah. Okay, now the, the next patrol will take out. We'll have the men patrolling between the forts, about 8 to 10 men between each fort. Yeah, hopefully, what we'll be able to do is we'll have. You know, eight to ten, maybe even six to eight men, so we can split patrols up a little bit more. And what we'll do is we'll try to have a patrol going between each fort, so maybe they can pass along the old mine road, and that way there they can all be back to the forts at night, so we can have that that shelter and also the comfort of the fort. And yet during the day, will give us plenty of time to patrol that area, that four or six miles between the forts, to give us that adequate amount of daylight and we should be able to cover it within that period of time. I understand our paymaster, uh, Hampton, has just commissioned some uh, some breeders in, in Elizabethtown to provide us with dogs to help us patrol. And actually, we'll probably be the first unit ever to uh, patrol with dogs. I understand it's supposed to be something like 200 dogs. Excellent. We should be able to smell the Indians out fairly rapidly. I understand they dress themselves as bear grease, so the dogs will be able to find them pretty rapidly. The dogs should be able to do pretty good, yeah, because what we can't recognize, they can. And I understand the only ones they're trying to recruit are large, mean dogs. Mm. At least that's what I've seen in the communications that we've gotten so far. Excellent, excellent. Uh, <laughs> what about this guy that's been uh, attacked a bunch of people uh, on Old Mine Road? Oh, that was uh, Sergeant Sergeant. Uh, oh, Ward was attacked. Just uh, a couple of days ago on Old Mine Road and killed. Just, just, just down, down below uh, Fort John. Yep. He was on patrol and was attacked by a small band of Indians. And then Van Tyle, I believe, chased a group out onto Cherry Island and they had a little confrontation out there. An Indian over there. I believe there was you know, Van Tyle had two men killed. And what they did is caught some Indians returning from a raid on their way back to Pennsylvania. on their way back to Pennsylvania. What they did is had a raft out on Cherry Island. And or building a raft on Cherry Island to get across the rest of the Delaware. And what Van Tyle did is actually set up an ambush for him. And unfortunately, what happened is that some of the Indians on the island spotted some of our men and returned fire, and Van Tyle lost two. We heard that yesterday, a young man by the name of Pitsort and his uncle and his father were minding their own business on a wagon when they were suddenly attacked. Not just by any Indians, but the, the Captain Armstrong, the most dreaded Indian of these parts. The main reason we're here today. What we understand is that this brave young man, not more than 12 or 13 years old, grabbed his father's gun, or his father's dead, lying there bleeding in the middle of the road, ran off into the woods. Captain Armstrong was so impressed that he went and chased him himself. Titsort turned around and fired his one and only load right at Captain Armstrong, who then felt dead right on the ground. He continued to run, found us at the uh, nearby fort. We came back to look for him, 
we always bring our large and ferocious dogs with us. It was only a matter of an hour or two before we found Captain Armstrong, the dreaded Captain Armstrong, covered under a bundle of leaves, completely and totally dead. What we did then, having finally captured Armstrong and taken him out of the, uh, taken him out of our, of our defensive picture, is we scalped him. And we sent that scalp. In fact, in fact, the scalp is still over there because our rider hasn't left yet. But we're going to send Captain Armstrong's scalp right to Perth Amboy to show the governor what the problem is out here. You see, every weekend it seems that there are parties of Indians who come raiding into these settlements. We have hardly a moment to breathe. We never know when they're going to jump out of the woods. The next person to be captured or shot or scalped could be you. <laughs> Talk about patrolling. Hmm? Talk about we patrolled the Delaware you know, canoes to see it. Well, we done 52 mile on the Delaware River. Uh, looking for Indians. Uh, we didn't find any. Uh, uh, the water was clear and beautiful. The eagle. <clears throat> the eagle. Saw a beautiful bald eagle. I dove into the river. Got his dinner. Other than that, geese. They're just absolutely beautiful. Our commander got got wet. <laughs> You don't have to tell, Ted. Why? It was funny. You don't look like the kind of guy that would turn away even bad food. No, oh, me, no. Nope. I'm well fed. Each time, each newsletter tried to write up something about the history of one of the buildings or of the area, uh, about Jonathan Hampton and his connection with the uh, forts along here during the French and Indian War. Mm -hmm. We had a series of forts running from Phillipsburg up to the New York State line, some 14 different forts and fortified houses, uh, all of which are gone now. The only one that's left is a little Karma fort up here. Uh, all the others have been bulldozed down or fell down. Uh, we recently had a, a dig up here on the hill at Fort Shackenack, which was one of the original four forts that was built during the, that period. Um, They've, uh, uh, the dig and it was trying to locate uh, the foundation of the John Rosencrantz house that was within the foundation, within the stockaded area. And uh, we think that we found the foundation, which uh, confirms the fact that that is the fort site. We use overlays, uh, uh, Pam Crabtree of uh, the New York University, who was in charge of the dig. Uh, used uh, Jonathan Hampton's map and try to match it with a, a grid of the same dimensions to find the exact position of the, of the foundation of the house and we think we found it. We'll have to confirm it later on, probably next year. They'll do a little bit more. Well, the Wolfpack Historical Society that got started in eight, 1984 uh, we have a landmark preservation committee that tours the houses uh, throughout the area, the historic houses, uh, to check them for vandalism or deterioration because of the elements. And uh, if anything is uh, found wrong, why we have a group that goes out uh, and takes care of them, restores the houses, repairs what damage has been done or attempts to do it. And if it's necessary, it's turned over to the park and they do uh, uh, have contractors come in and take care of it. We can't do are, it ourselves. Are there some good books available in the library, that, or the library, or in the bookstore people can buy on? Uh, well, there? we have books that uh, we have published, particularly one on this house uh, called uh, the, about the Van Campen House. We republished the Minnesink book. Uh, we republished the book on the River Road over in, by hand over in Pennsylvania. So we try to uh, restore and republish books that uh, are out of print that have to deal with the area. Uh, little booklets like uh, uh, Tramp on His Travels, which was uh, written by Warren G. Hurst 
back in uh, 1895, and he tells about walking down the old mine road and stopping at these various houses and, and uh, the history of, of the people that lived here at that time or back another 30 or 40 years. And uh, These are all, all books that uh, we, we like to, to keep, uh, accumulate but the information for our society. Uh, Newspaper articles, we get, we research and take, dig out newspaper articles. Uh, when the park took over this house, uh, they had the history of it, uh, that uh, it was built in the 1750s. Uh, we found out from a newspaper article of 1908 that we dug out that the extension on the house had a date of, of a, a cornerstone in it, dated 1742. They stated in it that there were seven fireplaces, which confirms to me that that part was built first because when this, the chimney in the end of this house has three flues in it. Why would it have three flues if there's only two fireplaces in this section of the building? It accommodated a fireplace that was in the other building. And they took the chimney off that part of it when they built this, added this to it. As you, as you see, Fort Gardner was actually the last fort built in the line of forts. It was constructed by our commander, Captain Richard Gardner, to protect the settlers that were obtaining land leases from the provincial governors of...